So before we get started working on these saws, let me tell you what the issue is, or at least what I think the issue is with both of these saws. Now, this is my everyday wood cutting saw. It's a 028 Super AV Wood Boss. Old saw, but great for cutting firewood. This is a big MS660 predecessor to the 066. Actually, that's vice versa. The 066 is the predecessor to the MS660. I got them backwards. Both steels, both great saws. I'm a Husky fan as well, but I happen to own steels. This saw, used to use it all the time for cutting large wood. I used to clean up trees and stuff for people. I used to help a friend of mine who had a wood cutting business as well on occasion. But ever since I've started a YouTube channel, I haven't cut much wood. And it's probably been three years since this thing's been run. I know, sad, isn't it? And it takes a snowstorm with lots of ice and down trees to get me in gear to get my saws up and going. So I tried this thing, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fire. Let's clean it up a bit, do it some justice, clean the carburetor on it, and hopefully it will run. Because you don't want to have to pull the rope on this thing any more than you have to. Dirty. One thing that I didn't do to this saw that it needs done is it needs the high output oiler because this thing does not oil enough, in my opinion, for a uh, bar this long. So this saw is a lot easier to handle without that big bar sticking on it. Spin it around and work on it a lot easier. So anytime you pull the bar off of the saw, you should really, or you pull your chain off to sharpen it, always feel this clutch bell bearing because they're pretty bad about going out. You should probably pull it out, put a little grease on it. This one feels real good. We'll pull it off and service it anyway. But uh, you know that's a spot you really need to watch out for is the needle bearing that uh, this runs on. So we might as well go ahead and pull this off and get a look at it. If we can. There's the needle bearing. We'll clean that up, put a little grease on it. It looks good. Doesn't look like it's been hot or anything. No discoloration in the bell. Never start an engine that has a clutch like this with the bell of it off. It's not a good idea. So I got the fuel drained out. Got it somewhat wiped off. Let's go ahead and pull the carb off this thing. Give it a good cleaning because that's what we're after right now. Not necessarily cleaning this thing up, but cleaning the carburetor. So we got the filter housing and filter off. Let's go ahead and pull off the uh, the carb itself. the carb and it comes off pretty easy. So an extremely important thing to look at on these small engines, weed eaters, chainsaws, stuff like that, is that the fuel lines need to be soft and pliable because they can get holes in them, pull air, make the engine run lean, you burn up your engine. Plus this saw and lots of saws have a rubber intake boot that goes from the carburetor to the cylinder. That can also get cracks in it, cause you to run lean, burn your engine up and you don't want that. So I'm going to pull this down a little farther. I want to get a good look at this boot 
and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this modern ethanol fuel is pretty hard on the rubber parts and fuel lines and stuff of these small engines. So here's the intake boot. The only reason I pulled this saw down this far is for my own benefit to look at it because it's been so long and I'm having trouble with it. I want to make sure everything's in good shape. So intake boot, no cracks, nice and flexible, looks good. Here's the impulse line. This line actually runs from the crankcase and creates a pulse or a vacuum that operates a fuel pump on this carburetor and causes it to pull, pull fuel up from the tank through this line and into the carburetor and obviously into the engine. And there's also one more line in the tank that has a weight on it that falls to whatever is the bottom of the tank depending on whatever position you're running this saw. So it's important that all your lines be nice and soft and flexible because that is the source of a lot of problems that I see, that I've seen over the years with these small engines. So sometimes you really want your screwdriver to be magnetic. This one's not, and uh, my screws keep falling off. And I'm trying to tighten up stuff down in a hole. So this is a little magnetizer. Just hold the button and run it in there. You can also uh, demagnetize it by just pushing the button and running it outside of the coil. That's pretty nice. It's not made by Linux, this thing's old. These things are handy in the shop. So here's a definite problem. This is the ground wire, the kill wire for the coil. And you can see it's got a, a worn spot on the insulation there. So if that grounds out, this thing won't run at all. So we're going to slide a piece of heat shrink over this and shrink that down, fix that problem. So it's always a good idea to clean the outside of a carburetor first. Before you attempt to clean the inside, make sure all the dirt's off the outside. That way you don't transfer any over when you take it apart and try to clean it. So I don't have a rebuild kit for this carburetor on hand, so I'm just being real careful when I take it apart, trying to make sure that I don't damage anything or bust any of the diaphragms. So just very carefully trying to get this thing disassembled so I can give a good look at everything and you know, find where the problem's at. So we've checked the diaphragm here. It's nice and pliable. No holes in it. Checked it up against the light. Sometimes these will get so hard that they'll actually crack and break. But this one's in good shape. No excess wear on the end of the anvil here. And what that does is that depresses this lever, the metering valve I believe, and either shuts off or allows fuel to come into this bowl here. There's a little needle valve down here that this arm lifts. Now there is adjustment on that 
you'll have to refer to your manual. Uh, this is a Walbro, so go to the manufacturer of the carburetor and they'll tell you how this should be adjusted uh, because that's important that it be correct. Sometimes they're adjusted across the flats of the body. You know, sometimes it's down in the bottom of the bottom of the bowl and sometimes it's just some random measurement off of a reference surface but you get the idea let's pull this apart it'll get you a little better look at at the works of it we'll clean it up and reassemble it so years ago i worked at a saw shop or a small engine shop and one of the first things that uh, my boss taught me was that obviously everything in a carburetor is there for a reason everything serves a purpose everything needs to be clean and a carburetor should be stripped down as far as you can comfortably strip it down to get a successful job right you only want to do the job once so clean it good the first time and that'll give you the best odds of it working properly when it goes back together so i'm just about to pull out the high speed and the low speed needle out of this carburetor now these adjust your air fuel ratio the low speed one adjust your air fuel ratio at an idle and your high speed adjusts your air fuel ratio at wide open throttle. Now, we're not gonna go into detail about these because that's an entire video right there on how to adjust these. It's not complicated, although there is a lot of mystery around them. This screw here just adjusts the air that runs through, or set your idle speed. Now, I constantly adjust these because we get wild temperature swings. It is in your best interest to learn how to adjust a two cycle engine. And it's not as hard as you think. So let's note where these are currently because they're in a good position. We'll screw them in lightly, counting the revolutions until they seat, and then write that down. Then that way when we put it back, it'll go back exactly where it was before you messed with it, right? In case you don't know how to adjust one, you can always count the turns to closed, write it down, and then put it back. And if it ran before, it should run again. But the best thing to do is just refer to the factory manual, this old wall bro, it'll tell you how many screws out from closed, lightly seated, you should be in order to get in the ballpark. But you get the idea. Let's pull these out, clean the passages behind them because it's important that we do that. So there's all sorts of little holes and passages through these carburetors, these little straws. A lot of times they'll fit right in there. And uh, you gotta be careful, wear safety glasses because it will almost always come out of the other hole that's pointed directly towards your eyeball. So I like to cut the tip on these little red straws at an angle. That way, I can press it up against the holes inside of the bore because there's lots of little holes inside there and get a better seal around it to get a little higher pressure. Make sure those holes blow are clear. Hopefully that makes sense. So the reassembly is obviously just the reverse of the disassembly. And Everybody has a very powerful tool in their pocket, uh, a cell phone with pictures and a notepad. I mean, if you really take your time, you can get it, get a good job the first time you've ever done it if you just take some pictures and some notes. So let's get a look at the fuel line just to make sure it's okay. There's the weighted um, filter. Now, you know, if you pull on this and it breaks, well, it ain't no good anyway. So, uh, don't be afraid to, to get in there and check it out because, uh, you know, these cause a lot of problems and can ruin your saw if they get a hole in it. So, make sure it's good. So, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we're just doing a quick service to the clutch bell and needle bearing here and cleaning it just like any other bearing with some carb cleaner fresh grease i'm just using some wheel bearing grease on here and on the crankshaft you know reassemble it all and you're good for you know, at least a few more saw sharpenings anyway
All right, so let's see. Now I know it's going to take several pulls just to get fuel up to the carburetor. So full choke. Now this, I took the compression release off of this. So you have to you know, pull it full compression. for bar oil instead of carrying around a gallon of this bar oil when you're up in the woods these are nice we'll see if we'll see if we can make a cut with this thing So it is very, very close. It may be just a hair on the lean side, but two stroking in the cut, four cycling when you let off the pressure, it's a change in sound that after a while you kind of can hear. It sounds okay to me. It's cutting good. Blade's a little, chain's a little dull. That's good enough. Works great. So there's few things worse than a dull chainsaw. Just causes you to have to work so much harder. Although this thing wasn't completely dull. It wasn't cutting like it should or like it does. This thing just annihilates wood. So I think we're gonna have to wait on this other saw to get it repaired. Although I probably should have done it first seeing as it's the saw that I use far more often than this thing. Although it does feel good to have this back as a usable tool instead of just a saw that doesn't run sitting in the corner. So simple fix really, just mixture I think of dried up fuel and uh, sticky two cycle oil that had been sitting in there for years causing the carburetor not to move fuel and therefore it not run. And I'm glad I caught that uh, abraded ignition wire as well because that could have caused all kinds of intermittent issues person thinking the spark plugs fallen and all kinds of stuff so glad to get that fixed speaking of spark plugs that's the first thing you should always check especially on a two cycle they are just notorious for eating spark plugs especially if they're running too rich so that's it or too lean i guess so that's it thanks for watching thanks to my viewers patrons and subscribers anybody who supported me on this project much appreciated hit me up in the comments if you have any questions i'll be glad to help if i can so that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.